remember the first clip is Jeopardy clip. Clip number one, here we go. Fingers crossed. There it goes. Everybody see it? Look at me, Jesus Bar Joseph. Why did the Phoenicians cut the hair of Samson? Forgive me, Rabbi, but it was not the Phoenicians. It was the Philistines, and they cut his hair to make him weak. Where is Elisha, who was taken up in the chariot? It was Elisha who was taken up. Elisha is with the Lord. Who resides in the Garden of Eden? No one. There's no one in Eden. There is no one in Eden writing this and all the deeds of the world down? Men say it is Enoch, but Eden is empty. Until the Lord says all the world will be Eden again. Why did the Lord break his covenant with King David? The Lord does not break his covenants. The throne is there. Where is the king? He will come, and his house will last forever. <laughs> will, will a carpenter build it? Yes, there's always a carpenter. Even the Lord himself is a carpenter sometimes. How is the Lord a carpenter? Tell me. Didn't the Lord himself tell Noah how to build the ark? What kind of wood to use and how it should be pitched? And wasn't it the Lord who granted the vision as a new temple to Prophet Ezekiel with the dimensions of the galleries? The gates, the altar, the Lord made the world, wasn't wisdom there like a master craftsman? If wisdom is not the Lord, what is wisdom? And when Cyrus the Persian decreed that we could return to our holy land, the carpenters came home to build the temple as the Lord said it should be built. <laughs> reason that I call this the Jeopardy clip is why? Why, because Patricia? There were lots of questions. They just keep asking him questions. Yeah. But he never did say, um, it, he never did state it in the form of a question, like, who is Elijah? Hmm. So I don't know if he gets points or not. <laughs> All right, next clip. Uh, uh, and no, Did you notice that wasn't in the temple? It was in the streets. Yeah. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about that. Okay, the next clip is Justin Bieber clip. Here we go. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. dealt with us. Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. How is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business?
those who's leading them. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Different, right? Yeah. Okay, so this next one is the starter mustache clip, and that's because Jesus is actually 13 and Middle Eastern looking in this video, and he's he just got a little bit of a, you know, Errol Flynn, hmm. you know, sort of going on right here on his lip. Please, have you seen Why are you alone? My son, he's only 12. He's... <laughs> Kids are lonely. It's Jerusalem. You from here? No. We came for the Passover feast. We thought he was in the caravan. The feast was three days ago. Jesus! Jesus! Mary. <gasps> Ima? We looked everywhere day and night. We were so scared. I told him. He's okay. Why is everyone so upset? Mary. He was in You were supposed to be riding in the caravan with Uncle Abaita. I was supposed to be with my father. Then why weren't you? I was. <sighs> you were in the temple? It was incredible, Mary. You should have seen him. He was teaching when I found him. The rabbis, the scribes, the scholars. They could not believe their ears. They barely let us leave. Didn't you know I must be in my father's house? It is too early for all this. If not now, when? Just help us get through all of this with you. Please. Maybe we should get going before they make a formal inquiry, hmm? Jesus, please don't do that again, huh? Yes, Abba. May I read? We'll see, hmm? Come now. We've got a long journey. Jesus, please don't do that again. <laughs> yes, Abba. Please, please, Jesus, don't do that again. <laughs> okay. All right, and the last one is Icy Eyes. King Solomon said after he built the temple standing in front of the altar of the Lord he spread out his hands and said can God indeed dwell with his creatures on earth heaven itself the highest heaven cannot contain thee how much less this house that I have built yet attend to the prayer and supplication of thy servant O Lord that thine eyes may always be upon this house, day and night, this place of which thou didst say, it shall receive my name. Son, we've been looking for you everywhere. Why were you looking for me everywhere? Did you not know you would have found me in my father's house? Son, we've been looking for you everywhere. Why were you looking for me everywhere? <laughs> oh, my Lord. I know. Oh, my Lord. For if we study, um, proceed, you know, we shall zoom to see if anyone's waiting to get them here. You can use that piece too. No. No? Okay. I don't see anybody waiting. And I checked my phone to see if maybe somebody was trying to say they're having trouble getting in. But I have no messages from anyone on my phone. And I don't have any here yet on Facebook. I see Ben Hill is here. and. Uh, uh, of course, if there, we could have people here, and I don't, and I don't know it. Mm -hmm. okay. But we're missing Gene and Zoom and uh, Dale too. Something must have happened. Uh, maybe they'll try again in a minute. I hope. Hope they're okay. You yeah. know, they had a lot of ice. Mm. Maybe the power was out. Mm. No, I think they had the power come back, but they uh, they still got a lot going on up there. Okay, so Kia. It's me and you and Patricia on the Zoom. So let's carry the ball here. 
Un unmic yourself. Uh, not unmic. Un Mute. Unmute yourself, please. And um, let's let's talk about clip number one. I called it the Jeopardy clip because the uh, the fellow in the clip was asking Jesus a series of testing kinds of questions, and it sort of began to look a little bit to me like Jesus was a contestant on a game show. <laughs> um, so what what about that? What did you notice about that first clip? It seemed like there was a bunch of trickery with the questions, you know, them trying to trip him up a lot. Yeah, well, why would they be doing that? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Why would they try to be tripping up a 12-year-old kid? I don't know, but the way that he responded, it was like he was referring to himself, like he was not Jesus. He was like he was talking about someone else. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't hear that at all. Um, yeah, like he was answering the question, answering all these questions, but it was like he was referring to this person, Messiah, who, this other person who's coming, not himself. But that's how. Oh, well, that's the way Jesus taught in the scriptures. It was well, consistent. I mean, so, uh, but you wouldn't think a twelve-year-old would do that, no. maybe. No. Yeah, it, it, he he seemed like an adult, and he seemed like an adult in a little bitty body. That's how they were treating him as Judge Malachi. And they treated, yeah, it seemed like it was more like a like a scene from later in Jesus' life where he's been tested by the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, did you notice that it wasn't in the temple? Mm -hmm. It was on the streets. It was on the streets. And did you notice the streets were empty? There was nobody there but the little circle of, uh, of guys. So, and, and did you notice who wrote the book? Actually, it was a novel. Did you notice who wrote the novel, Kia? No, I did not. Anne Rice. Do you know who Anne Rice is? Yes, I do. She wrote the, the book that was turned into that first clip. Hmm. And um, she's the one who is most famous, I suppose, for writing Interview with the Vampire. Uh -huh. She writes uh, erotica. She writes gothic novels. She writes about mummies and vampires and werewolves and oh my. That's surprising. So, but she was also raised a devout Catholic, and uh, she wrote a book about what about Jesus's childhood that is entirely fiction. So, what we have here, I think, is a scene from that movie that someone on YouTube thought was the same scene as the one in Luke two, but actually, it's a fictional scene from a fictional book. And the only real resemblance between those two scenes is that Jesus is without his parents at a young age and talking hmm. to some teachers. Well, actually, he's not talking to them. They're, they're grilling him. So how about that, Kia? I mean, we're talking about Anne Rice. That is perplexing because yeah. the two don't go together. <laughs> it, does, it really doesn't. Um, I know that she had some sort of uh, later in her adulthood kind of spiritual awakening um and that she wrote this book about jesus in response to that i guess um but it, it, nothing in it is biblical so this scene there's nothing in this scene that's biblical so we have uh in this scene i don't think the same scene we're looking at in luke uh it's just that someone on youtube thought it was the same and put it in the same category but this is a work of fiction, and it's a movie about a work of fiction, and Jesus is being grilled probably by the elders in his own town, Nazareth. That's not Jerusalem. That's what I'm thinking. So what does it say in the scripture that Jesus was doing in Luke 2? It says he was listening and asking questions. Well, I think what was happening was the other way around in that clip. Mm -hmm. For sure. They were listening and asking him questions. Yep. So there we go. Well, you know, it's like, because that's how the world um, is designed. The adult is supposed to ask the questions. You don't ask the questions. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that's just not the normal way things are done, usually. Well, no, but wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Well, then, so children in classrooms can't ask questions? Well, yes, they can. Well, then, that's what we're talking about here. This is a classroom setting. He's, it says he's sitting. He's sitting with the teachers listening and asking questions. I think 
get that. But so I'm thinking about culture, like in our culture mm -hmm. in, in the Bahamas, if I asked a series of questions to my dad, he would take that as an insult. But why are you asking me all these questions? He would not respond. Or I might get a slap in my mouth because that's, that's not respectful to do that. So in terms of, when I say the other way around, I'm not talking about the classroom, but just in terms of adult asking a child or a child asking adult questions, all those questions, you can get curious about things, but if I think you're trying to trip me up, like the, like like here I mentioned, yeah, you get a totally different response. So I'm, I mean, I'm not I, sure I, I understand, but um, I'm not sure I understand. Patricia, are you saying that? Uh, Kia, we lost you for a second. Try again. I was asking, um, maybe Patricia, if I'm understanding you correctly, are you saying because culturally the way that it was being depicted, they're saying, okay, it's rude for the child to ask the question, so therefore we'll flip it and have the adults ask the question of the child? I'm wondering, yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because in our culture, usually the adult asks the question. Children don't ask their parents the question, especially the kinds of questions that, that are being asked here. It's not like, you know, mom, can I go to the, to the store? Can I get this? Or it's not that kind of question. The kind of questioning that he's asking, they, it's like above a normal child's level of understanding. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, Jesus was listening in the temple, but now they're asking all these questions. Just, and, and I'm wondering, would it be that, you know, what you just said, that it wasn't supposed to be that way? Well, the other thing is, remember, it's a work of fiction. This never happened. And also, I think that a lot of movies and a lot of preachers and maybe a lot of Christians have a problem with Jesus needing to ask questions, needing to be 12, needing to sit with teachers and listen and learn. They need for him to be smarter than everybody and not have to learn. I, uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I think what movies do is they clean it up and turn it around and turn him into the teacher. The scene describes some teachers sitting around talking and he's sitting with them. He's listening first and foremost, mm -hmm. but he's also asking them questions. What's wrong with him asking them questions? He's 12. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. No, no, they not. didn't seem to have a problem with it either. I mean, there's no, nothing in there that says, go away, kid, you're bothering us. Stop mm -hmm. asking your stupid questions. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, it turned out that they were kind of amazed at his understanding as they were talking. They, were. they liked his questions. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be a rabbi without asking questions. The, the primary way of communicating for rabbis back then was by asking questions. You even answered questions by asking a question. That's a rabbinical, rhetorical style of debate and discussion. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's the, it's the primary way they communicated when they were having theological conversation. So, so that, that first clip is, is the odd one. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I don't think it fits. I don't think it's the same scene. Okay. And I think it's set in, in Nazareth. And I think it's set in the streets there. This is not the Jerusalem temple scene. Notice that Mary and Joseph don't ever show up in that first scene, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They're not even there. Yeah. So we don't get any of Mary and Joseph confronting Jesus about where he's been and why have you done this to us, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on, on clip one? Not for me. Okay, good. All right, how about clip two? This is the Justin Bieber clip. Um, that's the one that has the silent, large crowd of onlookers. And everyone is, for some reason, mesmerized by a 12-year-old child and, um, and are giving him the kind of reverence that you would give the Messiah if you knew he was it. Um, yeah. You know, but you, it's also a Mormon film. Okay, so this may be more instructive about how Mormons are supposed to sit in the pew mm -hmm. than about, hey, there's Paula. Mm -hmm. This may have more to do with, welcome, Paula, welcome, Paula. Can you hear me, Paula, Paula, Paula? She's connecting to audio. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that, you know, um, unlike your ex exuberant church, which would think it weird if people were sitting silently and not moving, mm -hmm. in some churches, mm -hmm. and maybe most Mormon churches are this way, sitting silently and reverently and listening attentively is the goal. The first word that came to mind for me was Stage. Yes, it looked very no, staged. Very staged, like this is just not normal. This, it, yeah, it, it's superficial looking, mm -hmm. artificial looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they wouldn't have known him from Adam. And what could a 12 year old have said that it would have drawn that many people around? What could he possibly be saying that would keep them locked on him as if he was the Lord speaking himself? And that's not the description that we get from Luke. From Luke, we just say there's some teachers and he's sitting with them and he's asking them questions and he's listening. The only thing I can see a 12 year old having that kind of attention is if it's Sarah or Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if Sarah, if Sarah was saying we're speaking, I think everybody would go, wait, she's speaking. Wait, everybody, shh, 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 shh. let's see what she says. But the thing is, is that in that clip too, as artificial as it was, mm -hmm. It was made worse by the fact that no one was saying anything. Yeah. You know, he wasn't asking questions. He wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. He was giving a sermon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no one dared to interrupt him. I, I didn't even hear anybody breathe. <laughs> Nobody's moving. Everybody's just like frozen. Well, anyway, so yeah, that, <laughs> that was the first thing um, that, that I noticed too. Um, uh, who are the two kids? You know, Mary and Joseph walked in with two other young children. Maybe his uh, siblings. Right? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, Mary and Joseph's next two children. Mm -hmm. So that probably the boy would have been James. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the confrontation. So. How does Mary confront Jesus about the fact that he's been missing for three days and they've supposedly been upset and looking? Did you notice that she didn't interrupt? Okay. She moved forward. She made sure that he saw her and then she knelt down in homage. She waited for him to get close enough to hear. And she said in a whisper, and I think I wrote the quote down somewhere. She said in a whisper, son. Why hast thou done this to us? You know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, she's not really confronting him. Mm -hmm. She says it because it's in the Bible. I guess they had to put it in there. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to. They chose to. They're, by the way, that's the only clip that had that, that verse in it. That mm -hmm. part of the verse? Yeah. Yeah, it's the only clip that did. But she had to kneel down and whisper it to him because she's not supposed to interrupt anybody. You know, in the, in the story in the Bible, you know, Jesus is sitting there listening and there you know, having this conversation, Mary and Joseph come up and, and Mary just interrupts the whole shebang in front of God and everybody and says, child. <laughs> he says, what? Let me, let me get the quote. Let me get the quote. <laughs> child, why are you doing this to us? Don't you see your father and I have been frantically looking for you? It's been days. What are you doing? Okay, so which, which seems more, which seems more like your family? <laughs> your mother comes. You've been you've been missing for three days, and your mother kind of meekly ap approaches you and kneels down, and she she kneels down and she says, she says, Patricia, why have you done this to us? We've been so worried about you. <laughs> Never. Yeah. <laughs> I would never yeah. get that. Uh, yeah. I think the other one is more like, well, it's, I'd be like, I'd be like, young man. It would be my dad, because in my culture, the men are more of a disciplinarian. And he, my mom used to tell us, just wait till your dad get home, got home, you know, that kind of thing. Not that she didn't um, punish us for things. She did. But the major punishment, which I think a three-day missing would be, that's major it would have been my dad saying you know what he said and it's, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have done no, no talking or asking any questions i'm gonna tell you that right jo now. joseph doesn't say anything <laughs> it's really interesting joseph doesn't say anything mary says both lines she says son why have you done this to us mm -hmm. 
We've been looking for you. She literally says, look, open your eyes. Look, we can't you see we're upset? We've been frantically looking for you for days. But Joseph doesn't say anything. He pointed upward to show her the temple. Yeah, but that's the next clip, and that's a whole different story. <laughs> that's the next clip. That's not this one. Oh. This clip is Justin Bieber. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought this next clip. Um, <laughs> okay. The next one is the starter mustache, and it's mm -hmm. in the streets. Mm -hmm. And that's a real mess. But to me, num clip number two is the worst. Mm -hmm. It's the least biblical, and it's the, the most fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just doesn't smack as something yeah. that would happen. They do, they are in the temple, he will, and you know, uh, but it, uh, beyond that, not much is believable. Um, what do you think, Kia, uh, Paula? Oh, Paula, I don't know if you saw it or not. You came in late. I agree. The whole meekness of, of his mother, I, I couldn't exactly buy that. Yeah, but you can't raise your voice in the sight of God. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we're we getting comments over here. I hope it's not Gene saying he can't get in. Oh, no, this is an this is a text message from um, an ancestry friend. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's an adoption <laughs> thing. Um, I'm trying to close her, but she won't go away. All right, back to this. All right, thank you for checking that mm -hmm. for me. I, I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, um, yeah, the, the meek and mild mom thing. You know, I think that's, that, that clip says a lot, uh, probably says more about the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints and how it functions mm -hmm. and what it believes mm -hmm. than, than the scripture in that case, which yeah. is ironic because really last week, the best clip was the Mormon clip. It was the wise men seeing the two-year-old Jesus. They produced the Mormon mm -hmm. clip last week that we liked the best. Yeah. Well, this one's the worst this week. So, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess you can win some and you lose some. I don't yeah. know. Um, uh, okay. Uh, anything else on clip number two? No, not for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Clip number three. All right. This is the starter mustache clip. Okay. So, the scene um, is, is after the events in the temple. So we've moved forward in time. They're not in the temple anymore. And guess what? Mary wasn't even in the temple. She asked Jesus these lines, and she asked him the question in the streets. Mm -hmm. And the questions are different. The whole setup is different. It's like, okay, first of all, Joseph talks more than Mary does. And mm -hmm. she's trying to defend Jesus uh, to Mary, saying, look, I saw what happened up there. You wouldn't have believed it. It was wonderful. He didn't do anything wrong. And Mary's like, I don't know. You know, she's freaking out, and he's trying to say, no, it's fine. And she says, but it's too soon for this, you know, son of God ministry stuff. And he comforts her and says, if not now, then when, mom? She says, but just please help us, help us do this with you. And he promises to do so, and then he makes a joke about, hey, can I read? And then, and then I'll hug and smile and laugh. So, the scene is, is dramatically changed, right? Am I wrong? So no, Joseph, he, but when they went, when they met him, he did greet both of them separately. What did he say? What did he say? Is this the mother? Is this the, the mother? Um, uh, Isa. Isa, and then he, he greeted Joseph also Abba. When when they were speaking, I noted that that he greeted both of them. Yeah, separately. but he was with his dad. He and his dad walked up together to find Mary. They came down from the temple together. Joseph found Jesus in the temple in this movie. Oh, I'm, this is I'm, afterward. Okay, I must be confusing. I don't remember seeing Joseph with him on the third clip. Yeah, on the third clip, they okay. walk into the streets together and they and they find um, Mary running through the streets shouting Jesus' name, and they're coming together. And he's Joseph saw everything that happened up there. You know, Mary wasn't even there to deliver her line. Got it. Yes. Yes. She wasn't even in the temple. Yes. And then he pointed to say where he was. Yes. Yeah. So okay. they moved. They yes. moved the entire scene, and they removed Mary, Mary's line from its context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remembering. Yeah. So she mm -hmm. says, she says to Jesus, "Just help us get through this with you, please." And I'm thinking, 
is this psychology 101? What is it? What is happening here? <laughs> That's not normal. Yeah, it's like <laughs> like the twelve year old is supposed to help her mom, you know, cope. I know. <laughs> you know what? You know who needs you know who needs a little bit of coping help here. You know, it's like the mom's about to kill him in the biblical story. She's really mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like son, yeah. child. What were you thinking? That's really, yeah. I hate I hate that they did that because. Actually, that scene is the best acted scene. You know, the, mm -hmm. the mustache, the Jesus with the little mustache, mm -hmm. that's the best acted scene, I thought. But so much of it was changed from the biblical story that it, it, lost, it yeah. lost its power. Because, see, the weird thing about this story is that the power of this story in the Bible is that it doesn't end very well. You know, they don't understand one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'm shocked by you. You're stunned by me. I'm stunned you again. You stunned me again. The end. And it said, and his parents didn't understand what he was saying. The end. Yeah. Well, you don't see. You got to fix that stuff, right? If you're in Hollywood, you got to fix that stuff. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was clip number three, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, um, anything else on clip three? Not for me. Okay, so icy eyes, clip four. What do you think? That freaked me out. His eyes were just too blue and just piercing. Just, I mean, piercing. Yes. <laughs> you know, it look, it's like one of those kids in one of those Stephen King, you know, Children of the Corn novels. Where, yes. Where they control you with their mind. <laughs> like, holy cow. <laughs> and plus, did he look? Did he look twelve to you? No, no. not at all. He didn't even look particularly male to me. <laughs> in one of them, really, maybe the first one, he sounded really feminine. Mm -hmm. um, in, was it the first one, I think? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is this a boy or a girl here? You know, so. We, we're, we're, we were, were you misgendering? <laughs> misgendering Jesus for a minute there? Let's just go there. We're not going to go there. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there. But, uh, yeah, I, yeah, he sounded really feminine. I'm like, is this a boy? Wait, wait. I was just really had to look twice yeah. because the voice didn't match. Well, if, if you think about the um, the Jesus movies that have been made over the years, even the adult Jesus in some of them tends to be uh, someone who has some more feminine attributes. I don't know what it is, but they, you know, the beard doesn't look real thick on some of those guys, and they had they they're pretty, you know, like the guy who played Jesus in Jesus Christ Superstar the movie. Mm -hmm. and the original Broadway play, who went on to be the lead singer for um, Deep Purple. Um, Smoke on the Water was their big hit. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, he had blonde hair, light blue eyes, and, and a wispy blonde beard. Mm. And I'm going, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, I guess, I guess I, it's a European thing. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. But I think movies have done a better job in the last decade, at least, of trying to at least have someone playing Jesus who looks a little bit Middle Eastern. You know? So that's a good point. So how, how old are these movies? From the, um, the last one with the blue eyes, mm -hmm. 1977. Oh, okay. The, um, the first one, I think, was 2016. And the third one was last year. Mm. Yeah, because it's a TV series. Okay. I'm not sure about the second one, the Mormon one. I don't know what year that was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So blue, Mister Mister Blue Eyed Jesus in the in the last one. So he doesn't look Middle Eastern. Um, one thing that they did well in there was they imagined this happening very similarly to the way that I did in terms of location and number of people. They showed other people milling about. They showed a small group of teachers together. They would tuck back on some steps under the royal mm -hmm. stoa, that's perfect. I mean, that's exactly what I'm picturing when I see that story. That, you know, they're, they're out of the sun, or if it's raining, they're out of the rain, okay? They're, they're out of the sun. They're in the place where the teaching takes place day and night, where there's reading and prayers and stuff. It's a, it's a colonnaded um, sort of a walkway with these massive columns, and people, um, it, it was one of the most, uh, I think it was Josephus said, it may have been the most beautiful building in the world at mm -hmm. its time. 
Uh, of course, it was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, but um, at the time, it may have been the most beautiful building in the world. And imagine Jesus tucked in there with some teachers and other people, you know, passing by, going to this, going to that. Not a big crowd all enthralled by what he's saying, but a kid who has not gone home with his parents when he should because he's learning so much and he can't stop. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that movie got that part right, but then as you zoom in, you realize that he's standing before them, and there's a beam of light coming through the window right onto his face and head, and he's preaching, quoting scripture and preaching. He's not sitting with them. He's standing before them, and he's not asking questions and listening. He's teaching them. He's preaching to them, right? And which is in which one? What, which the last one, the ICIs. Yeah. That light beam of light coming through on those icy eyes. I'm wondering why you think the persons in the movie who made the movies took it out of the temple. Like, you know, most of them, you know. Well, one, only one took it out of the temple. The first one was never in the temple to begin with, because I think that first clip was not intended to be the temple scene. I think that was just Anne Rice's imagination at work, putting together a scene where the local Nazareth synagogue rabbi dudes are grilling Jesus. It just got mistook for being that scene by someone on YouTube. But of the three scenes, only one of them took it out of the temple. And that was the, the second one with the mustache, the kid with the mustache. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in the temple. The, first, the third one and the fourth one were. Did anyone speak at all other than Jesus in that fourth video? It was just him until Mary came in, right? I mean, nobody said anything. He's standing there talking and quoting scripture and preaching and, and, and he's gesturing. It's very dramatic. He's gesturing. He's got his hands out like this. It's a beam of light coming down. And I'm thinking, okay, what part of sitting with them and listening don't you understand? <laughs> Mr. Zeffirelli, that's Franco Zeffirelli's film uh, from 1977, which I generally liked, especially as a kid, I thought, you know, I, I, it, was a, it was compelling in many ways, but I didn't know if it was accurate, because when it came out in 1977, I was 18. Well, you know, I think people who make movies, the goal, I think, is to make money. So if the story doesn't line up, you know, or, you know, with today's um, culture beliefs, um, you know, you, you fill in the gap, so to speak, to make it, make it your own or to make it what it needs to be. Even like a lot of movies, um, they would say at the end when you're looking at the credits, um, like most of it was true. I forgot how they word it. Um, Based on, based on, uh, yeah, based on a true story, but not yeah. necessarily the whole thing yeah. is true. They take out parts that they feel needs to be changed. And they do liberally change it, as you just saw. Yeah. They're very different. And um, some of the differences are, are pretty dramatic. Um, um, you want me to go through a couple of them? Yeah. A couple of differences? Mm -hmm. Well, um, it says that there that Jesus in Luke is he says he's sitting amongst the teachers. So the only one that did that was the bad one, number two, the Mormon one. Mm -hmm. But he really wasn't sitting among them. He was sitting on the steps and they were all standing around him. And it was a huge crowd of people, not just mm -hmm. a few teachers, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference. Um Jesus was, Luke says Jesus was asking them questions, and all four movies changed that, okay? In number one, you know, it's basically Jeopardy Bible quiz time, yeah. and, um, and it's they who are asking the questions, not Jesus. Mm -hmm. Three of them moved the scene to, you know, around. It's like, it's, it's not in the right place, and then two and four, um, he's the one preaching, and nobody else says anything. All right, then, uh, and uh, you might, might also note that in the, in the biblical scene, Ju jo Joseph doesn't have any lines. He doesn't say anything. And number one, Joseph and Mary aren't there. 
But in number three, Joseph has more lines than Mary in that movie. Number three is the one with the starter mustache. Mm -hmm. He's got a bunch of lines. Okay. Now, the, the worst part to me of any of these movies is the way that Mary is, is portrayed in that second film, the way that she kneels at a distance and she whispers her complaint mm. and he leads her out of the temple because he's in charge and the whole entire crowd is silent still. I mean, that, that, that's a creepy scene, man. Um, in, in, the, in the third one, Mary says in the streets, you know, we looked everywhere day and night. We were so scared. Okay, Mary doesn't sound scared in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mary sounds peeved. Mm -hmm. She says, child, why are you doing this to us? Mm -hmm. Then she says, look, open your eyes. Look, see, we've been frantically searching for you for three days. You know, she sees that he's not upset that he's not feeling remorseful that he's not concerned about how they might be feeling yeah. mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a tense it's a tense scene and they water it down by making her sort of hysterical and we've been looking for you every day we were so scared i mean you know why are, you know we're fixing it here and, and there's so many ways in which movies do that, but that, that's clearly softening it. And guess how it ends? She's, she says, you know, she, she smiles, she hugs him, they laugh. None of that in Luke. Mm -mm. It just ends. Mary didn't, and Joseph didn't understand what he said. The end. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. So Mary and Joseph um, in, in the biblical story are stunned and don't understand. But in, in, in clip one, Mary and Joseph aren't there. In clip two, Mary follows Jesus out with a raptured yet slightly puzzled look on her face. Um, uh, but it's definitely, not, you know, she's a little puzzled maybe in her expression, but she doesn't look stunned or slapped in the face, which is what the word the scripture uses it says she was astonished. It means face slap, existemi, I think, or ekplekto. There are two different words being used there, but one of them means uh, surprised in a good way, and the other one means surprised in a bad way. This is the bad way. She, it, she feels insulted, okay? And that you don't find that in those movies, but that's it's definitely in the scripture. Number three ends with hugs and smiles and jokes. And number four, we don't see Mary and Joseph's reaction. I even went back to the original film and watched the larger scene to make sure that whoever put it on YouTube didn't cut off at the end what, how Mary responded to Jesus when he, he said, you should have known I'd be in my father's house. But it just fades out in the real movie. We don't see Mary getting angry. We don't see Mary uh, upset and, um, and not understanding. We just see the blue eyes staring at us. Why were you looking for me everywhere? <laughs> he almost sounded like he was mocking her. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm afraid even my mama would have slapped me at that point. Yeah, but he speaks like that. I, I know, know. I know. Been for why do they have to why make? Why did they have me? to make a 12-year-old kid? What What were they thinking? Let's get an eight-year-old with bright blue eyes who says things in a creepy way. That, that, that'll make us really inspired and believe it's Jesus. 1977, Franco Zeffirelli, thank you very much. Okay, so. I guess the filmmakers felt that if they had to include this scene, which maybe they didn't, if they had to include this scene, they had to fix it. They had to soften it. Okay, this is the only scene we have from Jesus's childhood, and we can't have it end with them being at odds with one another, mm -hmm. with no one understanding one another, and both of them standing there shocked, stunned, and flabbergasted. The end. Well, that, that just won't do. All right, so now here's my question about Luke, and I hope we can talk about this for just a minute. Why did Luke include this story? You know, M Matthew doesn't have it. Mark doesn't have it. John doesn't have it. Luke's the only one that included the story. Makes me wonder if they knew about the story and just didn't put it in. Or if maybe Luke was the only one who had this story. But I'm going to give you all a multiple choice, okay? okay. 
why did Luke, you know, uh, include the story and not tidy it up? Just leave it raw and unresolved, right? A, Luke made up this story to make Jesus and his parents look bad. That's number one. <laughs> Luke made up this story to make Jesus and his parents look bad. Number two, this story really happened. It ended with a stunned Mary, a stunned Joseph, and a stunned Jesus standing there in that holy place, confronting one another in front of holy men with no one giving an inch. The story really ended with them locked in misunderstanding. That's B. And C, Luke did soften it. What happened was worse. Two is, this story really happened. And it ends with them locked in misunderstanding. A, B, or C. A, he made it up. It didn't happen. He did, he made it up just to make them look bad. B, it really happened this way, even though it's it's not a happy ending. And three, Luke did soften it because what happened was worse. I think B. <laughs> I'm going with B too. <laughs> it's a this is a, it's a very strange story that. Apparently, yeah. movie, the movies had a real hard time figuring out what to do with it, but you know that they weren't going to put what really Luke says happened in there because it just makes Jesus and Mary and Joseph look too human. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I was thinking about that earlier. Than you. Yeah. Jesus can't be someone who needs to sit down and listen and learn and ask questions because mm -hmm. he knows everything already. You know, they gave him the Bible quiz and he won. He passed. He, you know, he's the grand prize winner. <laughs> all right. You can't have Jesus learning. You have to take all the learning out. Yeah. Now, what does that what does that say yeah. you know, about our ability to identify with him if he didn't have to learn? Yeah. And when when did Jesus well, it's like the matrix, you know, you download like, oh, you know, you stick that thing in someone's brain and oh, I know jitsu jujitsu in five seconds. Yeah. You know, I mean, when did when did when did the heavenly father give him that download? Or didn't didn't he have to learn like the rest of us? Yeah, I think to some of them did not want to show his humanity. I mean, yep. as a, as a child, yeah. he's learning, and it's okay to, to show that, and that he makes mistakes. Well, if it's okay, I, mean, I think it is okay, and you think it's okay, but if the movie directors decided it wasn't okay, they have to think about their audience, okay? Yeah. They have to think about movie sales, and so if this scene ends like that, it could be so disturbing that they wouldn't realize that that's exactly what's in the Bible. They just blame the movie and Zeparelli wouldn't get paid. Yeah. Christians would boycott, you know, for what do you mean Jesus had to learn? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they just blinded everything. Yeah, you, you think Mary was ugly to Jesus like that? You think they left that, that place steaming with one another? Yeah, I've done, I do. But they're not going to do that in a movie. Yeah, I think it's the humanity piece that people try to make Jesus just the spirit being, this holy spirit, sacred being who never, who was not born and who didn't grow up and learned um, and ask questions and all of that. You know, I think he was born with gifts, but um, because a normal 12 year old, you know, not that they can't, we have some genius children around who has really well i mean it does say that they were astonished yeah at his understanding and mm -hmm. his answers mm -hmm. right it does say that mm -hmm. so he did he was special in a sense in the sense in the story that for his age mm -hmm. they were impressed mm -hmm. i mean they weren't running around saying we found the messiah or anything mm -hmm. but they said wow this kid is bright yeah. you know this kid knows his scripture. This kid knows how to ask good questions. And now I'm thinking about your early question, why only Luke recorded it? Yeah. And why did not Matthew and John record or this Mark. story or Mark? I mean, it's, yeah. And and in fact, the only story that we have in the Bible about Jesus's childhood, and that's a gap of from about age four to age 30, we got one little story for all those years, and this is the one they picked. And it's a nasty little, wonderful little, uh, exciting, challenging little story that, that ends with a, some tension. 
you know? I really, the only thing I can think of right now is that they wanted to, Luke wanted to share his humanity. Yeah. I mean. Or it just happened that way and he decided, well, <laughs> caution to the wind, it. I'm going with what I got. This is this is the story that they told me, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna write it. And then he says, "Read this," and they read it. And I said, "Is that what happened?" They said, "That's what happened." Are you sure that's what happened? Because that's wild. Yeah, that's what happened. I mean, they may have discussed it. I don't know. <laughs> I think there's something about being real that appeals to an audience. It appeals to me. Yeah, I mean, who wants fake? Well, but we got a lot of fake in those videos that we just watched. Yes, I, I know. And they're yeah. the only ones we've got. They're the ones that people paid to go to the movie theater with. You know how many millions of people watched that Zeparelli thing in 1990, 1977? I mean, half of America was watching that thing. It was a big deal. I'll be curious about what the critics said about those. Yeah, I, oh, you know? I, I don't know. Thing. I don't know. I'll be curious to see if any theologian critiques it, and then maybe someone who's not, who just critiques movies, and see what they think and compare the notes. Um, well, I bet you, if you compared all those notes, the critique would not be as good as ours tonight. Yeah. I, think <laughs> we, I think that we had a deep discussion tonight, and we have. I think I think we understand the scripture enough here to be able to point out what's sim what's right, what's wrong, what's similar, what's not similar, yeah. and ask questions about why they changed things. And I think you're right. I think, I, think, I think the thing that the movie directors were and writers were afraid of was Jesus' humanity. Yeah. Is that, well, Ralph, you there? I heard somebody. <laughs> somebody said, amen. Um, okay, well, we're out of time, y'all. Uh, anything else, um, Kia? No, um, the only thing I would add is just to say uh, with movies, I think, and this is just, a, of course, my speculation, directors have a hard time with, with um, adversity, especially when it comes to Jesus. And that may have been more of a director's choice to not leave it with somebody being miffed with Jesus when he's already gone through so much. So mm -hmm. let's change the ending on this a little bit so that no one else is miffed with Jesus. And there is this kumbaya moment for everybody, including with Blue Eyed Dude. Yeah. I totally agree with you. I think that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. Even though the depiction is completely off, I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's a director's choice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, everybody likes a happy ending. Warm and fuzzy, especially with Jesus. I want to warm and fuzzy. I want to see the director's cut <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the scenes that were deleted. <laughs> There's no telling. <laughs> I know you'll make some serious changes, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what would you do as a parent? What would y'all do if your if if San or, or or Sarah, you know, was missing for three days and and she told you all that and you were she, that and she was at the church the whole time praying? I would oh, not be silently on my knees in the synagogue in the sanctuary. I mean, I mean the police would be there so quick to see it all. The police would be there so quick. Kia would be out. She she she'd have the entire neighborhood organized. Oh, Lord. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Ralph and I would Ralph not be Ralph. calm going. Now listen, we need to talk. No, 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 no. And then, and then when it turns out that and when it turns it turns out that Kia is there with Paul with uh, Sarah, then then I think two girls are getting a whipping. I mean, I just do. <laughs> you two have been doing up here what for three days? I know. Like, you like, you like to get to the and, you get in this car. And so, <laughs> and so Paula says, Paula says, Sarah, how'd y'all get in that church without turning on the alarm? <laughs> She's gonna say, Well, we picked the lock and we, we already knew the code on the, on the no, alarm. No, no, no. She's gonna say, it to me. <laughs> Jesus let me in. <laughs> Ralph giving you the phone all right. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I'll make it to three days. They'll have to come get, get Emery. <laughs> I know, we'd have to 
to come get you out of jail, Aunt Paula. I know. <laughs> Oh Lord, that's interesting. <laughs> I, never, I never took. I really appreciate you bringing this bird because um, I had never thought about this. I mean, I've heard this story. You may have even preached on it. I I don't know, but I've heard it so often. So you know, taking the time to look at it and to really discuss it to make you think about the whys and you know when it happened and how it happened and what they included and what they did not include um, just makes you think. So I appreciate. Thank you very much. Yeah. Glad to do it. I, I love this story. I love it. Um, we'll be sharing it. It'll be on Facebook tonight. Um, it's being recorded there. And then if I will also um, upload it to our YouTube channel, which by the way, is just Bert Gary, all lowercase. That's my channel. And it, you know, it, it's the same videos. It's just that it's organized in a way that it's simpler to navigate. And it has those playlists where I've dropped them into different categories and all the Wednesday nights are together. All the bloopers are together. Okay. Sermons are in there by topic. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just easier to navigate and find what you're looking for. Yeah. But there are 130, 130 videos on there. Oh, wow. and, and there's a blooper category too. And we got 18 <laughs> bloopers on there that will make you laugh or cringe. I'm not sure which. Oh, yeah. I, I see the bloopers that I laugh, <laughs> especially yeah. the one on the beach. I watched Sarah <laughs> laughing out loud at one of them the other day. Sure. Yeah, the Which, one I think it was the, on when we lit the advent wreath on fire for the second time. <laughs> two years in a row, we burnt nearly burned something oh, down. Um, thanks y'all for being here. We're we're running out of time. Um, uh, really really grateful. Glad to see you guys. And uh, for those of you who are listening to the recording, come back and enjoy us uh, again next week if you will. Join us live. Uh, you know? Pastor Bird. Uh huh. Sarah said she's happy that you like your stuff. <laughs> I like my what? The, um, the gift. The oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, um, you're welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, well, the Lord bless all of you and keep you, and I hope that you have a great week, and we'll see you on Sunday. Remember that every Wednesday, Jean Mart I join Gene Martino at uh, 1130 Central every Wednesday. And his are all his are also recorded, so you can go back and watch them at Gene Martino. Um, Gene Martino Jr. is the name of it mm -hmm. on Facebook, and um, and you can see all of ours on the Al Rock Group. <clears throat> yep. So join us. Uh, Church is on at ten o'clock on uh, Eastern on Sundays, and then on Wednesday at eleven o'clock Eastern and six thirty Eastern. We have our studies. Yep. Come on back. All right. See y'all soon. Bye-bye. Y'all have Thank a good Thank you, guys. Day. Have Bye. a great day. Bye-bye.